right, it looks like it looks like we're live. So hi everybody. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Woohoo! T D I F. Thank dog it's Friday, right? <laughs> <laughs> so th I, this is Patty and we got Hillary and she's brought a special handsome guest with her today. If you want to share everyone <laughs> you've got with you. Hey everybody, this is Leon and he is all dressed up for getting ready for the weekend, our dapper little fella today. <laughs> <laughs> and he's our special guest today because he's he's showing off what we're all going to be putting together, <laughs> which is our dapper dog shirt collar and tie. So I'm hoping you're all excited to see it. We're, we're uh, excited to put it together for you. This is our first one. Um, I, it was a, an idea that we kind of Hillary and I put together. Uh, so that we could, you could see more of us, and obviously without Clover, I wanted to be able to share myself and see you guys and interact more too. So this is just the beginning of lots of fun stuff that we're going to do every Friday, and um, today we're going to get started with our Dapper Dog shirt collar. So if we're ready to go, we can get started. All right, sounds good. Your job is done, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Bye, Leon. <laughs> okay. All right, so today, um, this, is, this is gonna be a super fun, super easy craft. Um, the first thing that you're gonna need is to measure your dog's collar. So if you wanna take the collar out and a measuring tape, and just kinda go from one end to the other and get a good feel for how long the collar is. So I have our first dog, Daisy, she's, she's a beagle. Um, I've got her collar with me right now, and her collar is about 16 inches long. And so basically what you want to do then is you can dig through the back of your closet. I think that's where you grabbed your shirt, isn't it, Hillary? Actually, I, I have one like that, but this one happens to be a boy's size 7. For Leon has oh, about right. a 12-inch collar, so that's roughly around the size of a boy's 7. Okay. Okay, that's a good good thing to know. I ended up, you know, it's funny, um, Daisy wasn't a real big dog, Beagle, but um, but she has obviously a 16 inch neck. And so a men's um, dress shirt worked really well for that. And um, basically if, if you can, if you think about it, bring your measuring tape to the store and, and measure that as well, just to make sure that you've got the right, right length. Um, all right, and so then once you've got uh, the length picked out, the next tip to think about is to make sure that your collar is actually got this collar stand on it. That, that extra band underneath the collar part um, will really help keep the collar sitting up when you put it on your pup. Um, you know, it's nice to have a buttoned shirt, but if you get like a polo shirt or something like that, even though it's buttoned at the top, it'll have a really floppy collar to it and it doesn't sit right and all that kind of stuff. So um, make sure that you get a, a nice, good, stiff, uh, kind of formal dress shirt collar um, that's got this extra band on it. And then the next thing that you really want to do is um, grab your scissors and you're going to follow along the, the bottom of the band. You don't want to cut the button off, so make sure you, you start there. Um, and then we're just going to cut all along the edge of the collar. And be sure to say hi if you're watching us right now. Hello. We're having fun today. This is our first Big Dog It's Friday craft show. So we're having a good time with you guys. And if you have any suggestions or ideas or... Yeah, we would love to hear from you. If you have some craft ideas or just fun stuff that you want to share, we are more than happy and looking for ideas. So Yeah, by all means. All right, it's pretty easy to follow along the collar band here at the bottom. Um, it usually has a double stitching, so it's really easy to follow. Um, and typically the shirts don't fray that much. Um, also makes it easy to cut. So on my shirt, I've had a little decorative type of ribbon in the back. That's the part that just this particular shirt happens to fray a little bit more, but the actual... Okay like shirt material really does stay pretty uh, yeah. unfrayed, especially once we start doing the next step. Right, and as you mentioned, the next step would be to, to get some fray check. So that'll be the next thing you need. 
And you can get this at any craft section of the grocery store or, or hobby store or sewing shop or anything like that. It's, it's pretty easy. And we actually have a, a little tutorial all written up and um, it has links to places so that if you don't know where to get it, it's, we've got them all, all set up for you. So basically the next step then is to just go right along the edge of the shirt and just a little, little bit of, just getting it wet with the fray check. You don't need a whole lot. And we'll go along. Alrighty. And it looks dark when you first start putting it on. It does, it, it may slightly discolor the shirt, but once it dries, it tends to lighten up again, so Although it might look really dark when you first put it on there, as it dries, it tends to lighten up. Yeah, that's a good, good thought. Just getting to the end here. All right. And then the next step, actually, before we get to the next step, um, what you want to do is go ahead and button your collar together. And what I would probably do, and Hillary, you, you know, you've got your, your little handsome fella there. Um, I think that you tried this on. If it fits over their head buttoned at this point, you're good to go and you can move on to the next step. But if there's um, a little difficulty, maybe their head's a little larger than their neck size um, and it's hard to get it over their head, what you can do at this point is just cut the collar right down the center. Use that fray check again, um, and you can use needle and thread if you need to, but really I think just fray check is all you need. And then you can get some, I have some uh, sewing elastic here, and you, it comes in different colors, so you can find one that get, you know, more closely matches the, the collar that you're using. And then basically just take a couple inches, maybe two to three inches, and just sew each end of the sewing elastic to the two halves of the collar, the ends of the collar, right on that collar band at the bottom there. And then what that does is that'll allow you to stretch the, the shirt collar when it's finished over your pup's head um, and make that a little, that step a little easier to do. You lucked out, you just, Leon happened to just fit right in his, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> He's got such a skinny little face that it just slides right on. So depending on the shape of your dog's head, that's, you can do it one way or the other and it'll. Right. Yeah. And if you went with a bigger collar size to get it over, um, the collar would just get, I think, look too big on your pup. And you can try to button and unbutton it in the front, but we're going to be attaching a, a tie to it. And then that makes it kind of difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Hi, Deborah. <laughs> hey, Deborah. Thanks for joining us today. It's so great to see you. Um, so another thing you can do if you want, you can stop right here. I mean, I've got another one here and just leave it as a collar if you don't want the tie. I think that looks really cute as well. Um, but we'll go ahead and add a tie to ours because we have a little sharp dressed man around here, right? And the next step then would be to get a tie, which you can get a clip on, you can use a regular tie. Um, I've got a couple examples here. I actually just used a regular tie and made a, a, a single knot in it and then cut it to length. It's super easy. After doing this, we decided just get a clip on, right? Or one that's already knotted. Isn't that what you were thinking? Yeah, anyway. and I had one that just has a, an elastic band. Is I got it. There was probably a pack of five, I think, on Amazon that was worked perfect. They had just had an elastic band, so I just cut that elastic, and I'm just using the tie portion, and I'll trim it up as well. Great. And then what I'm doing is I'm using a little bow tie. I think they're just so cute. And I got one. Um, but again, I got actually I got mine on Amazon too. <laughs> um, and this one is so cute. Look, it's got a little dachshund on it. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> I thought that would look sharp with my little striped, striped shirt collar. So again, let's button that up. And I think my hot glue gun is warm enough now. And we can just simply glue that on. 
the button. There's my little little stars on this particular one. Oh, how cute. I cheated. I don't have to cut my tie down, make it shorter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just using a little bow tie today. So I'm I'm adding fray check to the edges of my tie where I just cut that off. That's smart. Um, the other thing that I um, had done when I was making a couple of these other ones um, was I used uh, stitch witchery, which is kind of cheating a little. Um, it's this kind of lacy material that you can just cut small pieces of it, tuck it in between the, the fabric at the bottom of the tie that you've cut, and then you just get a little wet and you iron it. So instead of sewing with needle and thread or anything like that, you can just use this little woven, it's called stitch witchery, you can use that. And that'll, again, help prevent it from fraying and it, uh, you know, adheres the, the two fabric pieces together and all that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> all right, great. We've got that, and I have another one with another little bow tie. I'm going to finish this one up with some hot glue again. I was thinking of making one. This one looked like the perfect color for St. Patrick's Day last week. I was getting all the materials. More sweet. I don't know if you can tell, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, but there's my little green and plaid one for St. Patrick's Day, and here's my little my little dachshund. Oh, brand. <laughs> oh, cute. It's so adorable. How does yours look? How's yours coming along? So I'm just got done adding the fray check. Now I'm gonna start kind of placing it onto the collar and hot gluing okay. the tie down. I usually start on this side where the, where not where the actual button is, but leaving it buttoned and gluing that side down first. And then yeah. it tends to get a little sky wickety if I don't uh, glue down both sides. So after I have one side glued down, then I'll add a little bit of hot glue to the front side, just to kind okay. of secure it on both sides. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, what I ended up doing, so I tried this um, last weekend, I did it the hard way, and I ended up sewing it on um, and thinking that it would be nice to have it open in the front, but that, it, I don't think it works as well. It doesn't lay as straight. It's, it's a lot more difficult. I think hot glue and just making sure that this front is secure, um, is a lot easier way to do it, um, less complicated and all that. Yeah, and this collar actually has a little extender in it, so there's a little piece of elastic, and I was trying to, kind of the same idea, trying to leave that so that it could stretch if it needed to, but as soon as I really put it on Leon, it would start poking out sideways and stuff like that. Oh. I realized I'm just going to have to glue that down if I want it to lay straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, I just love my little... <laughs> and one of the other things you can do um, with collars that have buttons that have been buttoned down, you can find some really fun little stylish buttons and or you can use the original buttons that came with your shirt and then just glue those in place in the corners of the, of the collar as well if, if you like. Add a little, little extra pizzazz there. Not all the collars that I had have were, were buttoned down on the end of the collar, but that would be fun to do too. How's yours coming along? So now I'm just gluing, gluing this other side. Okay. Gluing that guy down. There's our little. <laughs> That's adorable. That's so cute. How sweet is that? Hi, Margaret. It's so great to have you here. Hi, Elle. It's great to see you. All right, great to hear from you. 
<laughs> I bet if you tried it, it would turn out just fine now. <laughs> fine. And maybe you could put put one on, on for you, a, a shirt and tie that matches. That would be so cute, wouldn't it? That's great. All right. So one other thing for those of you that have girly dogs, uh, just a little extra tidbit um, tip. Um, I've got a couple of our friends up here for as my models here. So here's our little shirt and tie collar. Uh, but I also did another one where it was just taking a nice large piece of lace. And this is super, super easy. Um, so if you find some nice wide lace at the store, um, and then you just cut the ends and use that fray check again so that it doesn't, um, so that it doesn't fray. And then I just added a snap to the upper top corner on the two, on the two ends and then add a nice little embellished button for this one um, or the one up here that I've got hanging. I just um, interwove a, a little ribbon through the lace and then just you can tie it in a bow. So if you want something for your for your girly dogs, you can do that as well. That's super fun and easy. So anyway, we'd love to see it. If you guys put some together, you guys and gals out there, put uh, your dapper dog collars on your, your adorable pups. Um, if you do, take a photo, uh, give it a hashtag TDIF for Think Dog It's Friday so that we get a chance to go out on the internet, either Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or wherever you're posting your pictures um, and we'll ooh and ah all over your lovely pups. <laughs> Um, get to see them in their in their stylish new looks. So thanks everybody. We're going to be doing this. We're going to try and give it a go every Friday. Do something fun and different to celebrate our, the love that we have for our dogs. And um, we're looking forward to making you a part of the fun and enjoying uh, enjoying us along the way. And if you have any ideas for crafts or cooking recipes or any kind of fun stuff just that celebrates the love of your dog. We're more than happy to, um, to hear all the ideas that you might have yeah. uh, to share. And we'll be, um, we'll keep, keep doing what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Having some fun. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Take care. Bye. <laughs>